gallery occupies all nine of our galleries for Chinese painting and calligraphy. And it's really an attempt on my part to try to introduce all the different ways in which somebody, uh, even a newcomer, to this tradition can approach Chinese landscape painting. So we have uh, 50 works of painting and calligraphy in the show, and then about 25 works of decorative arts. See, you have your own understandings of the Chinese traditional landscape paintings. Uh, so, um, do you think what's the uh, difference between a literati painting and a royal painting about the landscape? And which which is the style you would be like more? Uh, I I like it all. I have to say, I don't I don't uh, I don't play favorites with styles, but. Um, you know, you raise this, this question of literati painting. It's a really interesting point. So in the Chinese tradition, something happened very early in the 10th, 11th century that happened much later in Europe where um, paint paintings that looked like nature and the idea was that if you looked at it, it was like looking out a window. That's the so-called realist painting tradition. But then around the 10th or 11th century, a group of scholars and painters decided, you know what, actually it would be more interesting if we painted landscapes that really express something that's inside us rather than something that's outside our window. And that's the literati landscape painting tradition. I guess I would say the literati landscape painting tradition is a little bit more like poetry. It's very poetic. It doesn't tell you everything. It more suggests what you're supposed to know. Whereas paintings like this one behind us are very descriptive. And they want you mostly to be able to use your eyes to sort of go inside the landscape like you're looking through a window. Um, I love both of those types of landscape painting. And uh, so I hope that visitors will find that in these galleries, in this exhibition, you'll find a really good selection of both types. We see a lot of different uh, styles of paintings on landscapes from the world, uh, different uh, places of the world. For example, we can see uh, some oil paintings on the landscape of mm. the Western style. So what do you think the biggest difference between the Western skill and uh, the Chinese skill? Is, is it the, the taste or mm. uh, the skill? What do you think? You know, it's interesting. I guess what I would highlight uh, that's probably most interesting within these galleries is the different formats. Because this whole gallery that we're in right here, this is the first gallery of the show where I introduced the idea of the long landscape hand scroll. You can see that this long landscape hand scroll, you know, we open the whole hand scroll up when we show it. But, um, you know, traditionally, in a traditional context, it would have been read one piece at a time. And so that journey that the people in, you know, the little figures inside the landscape are on, you go on that journey with them. And that's one of the joys of landscape painting in China. And so I, I think what I would highlight more is, um, you know, less a difference in the approach to landscape painting in terms of the skills and techniques, and more the difference in the formats, because this is a possibility uh, that you cannot have. It's an experience you cannot have across the way in our European painting galleries. You have to come uh, to our Chinese painting galleries. Okay. Uh, so this one is your favorite, and uh, um, can you give us any reason besides the special design of uh, watching the landscape mm -hmm. from an open window? I should say, you know, uh, the landscape painting behind me was the first uh, first artwork that I chose for this exhibition. And one of the reasons was that I tried to include it in earlier exhibitions, but I didn't have enough space. This is a fabulous 15th century, sort of early to early middle Ming Dynasty painting. And it's painted very much in a kind of combination of Song Dynasty styles. So again, following sort of Southern Song, a little bit Northern Song, very realistic. Um, style. The thing that I love about it is what I was just talking about, this idea that you can follow the small figures through the painting. The seasons actually change as you move through this painting. So you begin in the spring with the sort of fresh buds of leaves appearing on the tree into a misty scene of high summer through to autumn. And then at the end of the landscape, it's painted in reverse where the blank silk stands for snow and it's kind of a snowy mountain scene. And so for me, this painting really made the point that I wanted to make in here which is that to look at a painting like this, it's not something you just hang on the wall and walk by it on your way to the kitchen. It's an experience and it's really a journey. And so that's why this is a sort of key work in the exhibition. Uh, I find a very interesting point of this exhibition. I never see a, a painting of in, um, in, uh, like uh, the investigating to other painters' uh, paintings. So why do you choose uh, 
some some painting people say that it might be a fake one. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right, you're talking about uh, there's one painting in particular in the third gallery of this exhibition, which has a signature that turns out to be a fake signature. We we look at it, we say the style cannot possibly be a 12th century painting, and we believe it to have been painted in the 17th century. Um, and yet, it still has a lot to teach us about history. It's not a 12th century masterpiece by Zhao Boju. I wish it were. If it were, it would be one of the most famous Chinese paintings in the world. But what it does tell us is what 17th century people, you know, uh, late Ming, early Qing people, what their understanding was of Song Dynasty landscape painting. And of course, they didn't have WeChat, and they didn't have Facebook, and they didn't have the ability to reproduce these things and share pictures on text. And so how did they reproduce paintings? They had to paint them. And so that's where I think that that painting, in spite of the fact that it's essentially a fake, it's a forgery, it still has a lot to teach us about Chinese art history.